Hello, welcome to another QA Automan tutorial. To, in this video, we're going to talk about testing g.xml parameters and how to inject them into our tests. To get started, we're going to go to our XML. And there's two ways to write out your parameters. You can do it in the suite parameter where it has a name and a value. And this will be able to be injected for all tests. So when you run this class or this class or any method, it will pull this parameter or have the ability to pull this parameter in to any of these tests. Uh, so for example, I'm going to do, let's say, uh, language. And the value we're going to do en uh, as the code. <clears throat> so I'm now saying that all these tests now have access to the parameter language for en. Now let's say I have a third case that this one is in particular for German and I want to uh, put the parameter, I don't want it to run in EN. I want this one to run specifically to German. When I put the parameter under the test, I'm now saying I want you to override the parameter in suite and use this parameter instead if it's used by, if it's using the same exact name. Now it won't matter if this was something else like know country code or, or something like that it that's it would be irrelevant only if it's matching the same name as the uh, parameter in suite now it's it's very unusual for me to really use something in the suite it's usually test specific um, maybe if it had to do with uh, the browser type or something like that um, but for now uh, for the sake of our test I am just going to put it into individual tests um, so I'm going to cut this guy out <clears throat> and put it under my test. So, so how do we get this language, this value, into our tests specifically? We're going to be using a new annotation called parameters. And inside parameters, you can specify any number of, of parameters that are lying in our XML. Uh, for example, let's say I'm going to do two language and then browser browser type and I want to use uh, Chrome uh, well I can go into our parameters uh, using curly brackets and I can type in our two parameters which would be language and browser type <clears throat> so I am now saying load page test can you take these parameters and pull them from your XML and it will look in the XML and look for these parameters that I have set so now we want to put these guys and inject them into our load page so to do that you actually have to start putting arguments into your test cases so in this case um, they're gonna be strings because the values are strings uh, and we're gonna inject in a, um, a language and browser type. So I'm going to put that. So language, and then the other one is string browser type. Uh, and now I'm going to write out, I'm going to do a, just a system.out.println, and I'm going to say lang, language, language. is language and browser is browser type did I spell language <laughs> incorrectly uh, let's fix that <clears throat> so if I run this test and I want to um, <clears throat> and test this out I I have to run the XML um, so I'm going to run the XML. I'm going to cut out this test uh, just for to run run it faster. So it's now running our tests. And if you notice next to it, it's showing a little bracket and what we passed in. Or, or excuse me, we have our parentheses which tell us what parameters we're passing in, kind of like we it did for the data provider, uh, and then for what test it was, and it was load page. And we put EN in Chrome. Um, and it should 
have printed, yep, language en, browser Chrome. Uh, so that's a good way to pass in parameters from your tests, whether it be login names, uh, any kind of, any anything you want, you could pass in. Now, let's say you're just doing some debugging on your own, <clears throat> and you say, oh, let me test this. Um, I should run this load page. Well, see, now it throws an error. And see, now it's saying parameter language is required by this at, at test on method load page but has not been marked at optional or defined in blah 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 blah. Uh, this is just the temporary uh, XML that it creates. <clears throat> now this at optional is a really cool tool because what's happening is we don't we haven't specified language or browser type. Inside the XML we have the information but it doesn't know where to pull the information because I'm not running from an XML I'm running locally. So to get around that, um, test in G has a at optional annotation that you could put in for something that, let's say, isn't required. Um, it could be something like, oh, this can, this, the browser type doesn't matter um, kind of thing. So we, let's say if I take out a language um, and just say, Browser type is going to be optional. We don't care for, you know, what. It's only if I specify if I'm going to use Chrome or IE or Firefox. But no matter what, we'll have it default to <clears throat> something like uh, Firefox. So if I, if I run this now on load page, it will say, hey, I don't see a browser type parameter, so I'm going to instead optionally put in Firefox. So I'm going to do a quick test to show you what happens when I run load page. It also will not skip it either. So it default or optionally put in Firefox. So now it will always default at Firefox. Now if I go back here and I run this guy who has the browser type is actually Chrome, it will run the test as Chrome. Uh, so <clears throat> that's kind of a, a, a an insight of how to kind of start injecting parameters into your test. And you can do it for all tests. Um, and like I said, you always remember that if you're not going to put optional, it's always, always required. So then you lose the ability to pull or, or to run something locally without running through an XML. So let me know in the comments below if this was helpful. Um, later, I'm going to actually talk about running in different browser types. Um, and that's going to be in a later video uh, to actually show you in action uh, parameters. Uh, until then, this is QA Auto Man signing off.